Well, hello, welcome back to the Sanders Review. My name is Caleb. I am a history teacher and admin at a school. I love reading, watching movies, playing games, anything that has an amazing story. And my family and I actually decorated today for fall. Uh, fall was yesterday, first day of fall, but uh, my son declared that the first day that we decorate for fall will henceforth be known as Pumpkin Day, and he was running around yelling, Pumpkin Day, and so it just had me feeling very nostalgic. So what I wanted to do today was film, and I'm drinking some uh, apple cider, embracing fully everything uh, fallish. Today, I want to go through and rank my top 10 favorite sequels that are better than or as good as the first book. Now obviously we could go way down deep into some series, but we're looking at just the second book that I feel was as good as or better than the first book. There will not be any spoilers in this, so you don't have to worry about that. This is purely my personal opinion. I know some people out there may object to this, and that's completely fine. If you have a different list, comment on that below. Tell me where I'm wrong. I would love to hear your opinion, but this is just my personal opinion. And obviously, I haven't read every single book out there, so there's some amazing books out there that I probably just have not gotten to. So please let me know some amazing sequels. I would love to be able to read and expand this list in future years as I just update. So to start off today with some honorable mentions, I wanted to bring up Before They Were Hanged. This is in Joe Abercrombie's uh, first Law trilogy. And the first book was amazing. The second book, all I have to say in one name, is Glockta. And you know what I mean. So that's an honorable mention for me. Amazing first book, great second book. Um, I haven't actually read the sequel in his new Age of Madness series. It's on my TBR for this next year. And so that probably, as much as I love the first book in Joe Abercrombie's Age of Madness series, I'll probably have the second book on the list, this list as well. But that's an honorable mention. The second honorable mention, and this is one that maybe people will be surprised by, because the first book was so, in my opinion, god-awful and the sequel book is called Stone of Tears. If you have ever read the first Wizard's Rule, Terry Goodkind, he wrote the Sword of Truth series. And when I read this book, I was in college and I read the series in college and I thought it was the greatest thing ever because I hadn't actually read many other series. And I read the first book, I reread the first book after reading, I realized how bad it was. There are some people, I have some good friends who think opposite, but this is my opinion. The second book took the story and actually went somewhere amazing, had major issues, major issues. I'll probably talk about it at some point in the future, but it was a sequel that was better than the first and so significantly that is why it's on my honorable mentions. Another honorable mention real quick would probably be a Chamber of Secrets. J.K. Rowling uh, did a great job of expanding the Harry Potter universe with the next book. So that's my honorable mentions. Let's get to my number 10. Coming in at number 10, and this might be a really big surprise for anybody out there who really loves reading uh, fantasy and literature, and my number 10 favorite sequel of all time is The Two Towers by J.R.R. Tolkien. And so the Two Towers is an amazing sequel that expands the Lord of the Rings, the world of Lord of the Rings, the journey of the quest to destroy the ring, and with the split between the party, uh, the first half of the book, you follow uh, Aragorn, you follow the main storylines uh, trying to uh, rescue uh, Pippin and Merry, but you also follow Merry and Pippin as they're then escaping a Fangor Force. The entire uh, element of, of the second book just expands the story. And then you follow Frodo and Sam meeting up with Gollum and there, and they actually go further into the story, which gets into the third movie, but the second story does an amazing job of just expanding and does a great job of delving into the darkness of the story while still having some elements of levity. And for me, it's a amazing sequel and might be surprised why it's number 10, but just wait until you hear some of the next books that are coming up. Coming in at number nine for me is The Hunger of the Gods, which is the sequel to The Shadow of the Gods, which is by John Gwynn. It's in his Bloodborne, uh, Bloodsworn trilogy. Uh, the third book is actually coming out this October, The Fury of the Gods, and I cannot wait for that. Uh, John Gwynn is a author who just really delves into uh, in this series, especially mythology, and it's also huh, probably one of my favorite book covers of all time as well. And uh, it is a story that expands into an element of Norse mythology following various storylines where the gods have been killed or captured and held prisoner, and it is them returning. Uh, and that's just a uh, spoiler alert. Uh, <clears throat> those big creatures are the gods that little those are people, you know. So it is an amazing epic scale book, and the first book 
takes you an amazing, it starts off a little slow, takes you on this epic beginning to a journey, and the second one just expands in the scope and sequence of the telling of an amazing story with amazing journey, with amazing character development, and amazing battles. And so it's a great sequel, highly recommended. That is my number nine. Number eight for me is The Wall of Storms, the sequel to The Grace of Kings by Ken Liu, uh, an absolutely amazing East Asian, specifically Han China inspired series. And The Grace of Kings, I thought was an amazing, as a historian, I like it. It's a little much more grand in its scope with much more historical feel without going through the clash of battles in the trenches. It's much more of an overview feeling type story, but it is so, complex and is so riveting and for me it was very much reminiscent of a lot of the elements of Chinese history I want to talk about at some point but the wall of storms takes what was amazing in Ken Liu's series his dandelion uh, dynasty dandelion dynasty series and the second book just takes it way further with foreign invasion with very unique uh, form of dragons I'll just say and it is a very interesting story that takes a flawed character as a ruler and expands in a couple decades later the challenges that come to a dynasty that has been experiencing a wealth of bounty, but now all of a sudden has tragedy thrown upon them. It's, I don't want to give spoilers, but it is an amazing sequel. So Wall of Storms is an amazing sequel at my number eight. Number seven for me, this is getting a little bit away from fantasy, is World Without End, the sequel to Pillars of the Earth by Ken Follett in his King Bridge series. This is a sequel to a amazing five-star A-plus book uh, in Pillars of the Earth following the construction of a cathedral in a small uh, city in England that is expanding. The first book, Pillars of the Earth, taking place during some religious and military turmoil. The second book jumping into the beginning of the Black Plague in that same area and following various characters of different socioeconomic, religious, political standing as they are expanding a cathedral, expanding and running a town, a city in the middle of arguably one of the darkest periods of human history. And it does an amazing job of doing that. And it is a book that is, in my opinion, as good as the previous book. Number six for me is Shadows Linger, the sequel to The Black Company by Glenn Cook. Glenn Cook wrote The Black Company as a, almost like an homage back to the Vietnam War, where it is following a mercenary company that is in the trenches working for the villain. And you come to realize that there's no glory in war, there's no glory in whichever side you're on, and Shadows Linger expands upon what the first book is, and you start learning that there is possibly evils worse than the evil ruler that they're serving. And you follow the main characters as they go into various situations, especially instead of jumping around to different places like the first book does, the second book hones in on one city and follows a portion, a squad of the black company that is running this city. That has some very dark things going on and it is a captivating book in my opinion. That is why it is my number six. Getting into the top five for me, these books, any of them could change location depending on how I'm feeling or what I've read recently. Uh, but let me know down in the comments if you agree with me or not so far or anywhere further. Jumping into sci-fi, the sequel to the best-selling Red Rising series is Golden Sun. Red Rising follows a Delver, a person who on Mars is the, a Red. He's the lowest person on Mars and he rises up through various situations to rise up into a position of power through kind of a, a school warfare training type book, which is flawed, but it was a very engaging book. Golden Sun takes the elements of Red Rising and just expands it to the next level in scope of of solar system wide warfare, the system of ranking of golds being at the top, reds being at the bottom, and there are some twists in this story that are gut wrenching, that are cheer worthy, that are tear worthy. It is a amazing second book and my favorite of the Red Rising trilogy. Highly, highly recommend at number five, Golden Sun. At number four, and I cannot stress enough how much I sat and agonized over my top four. My wife walked by and I was just like, why did I do this video? Why? Because any one of these books could be in my top four. And I just realized I'm very much a nerd and proud of it because these are things that 
I'm happy to <laughs> try to figure out. And number four for me is Words of Radiance, the sequel to Way of Kings in the Stormlight Archive. Brandon Sanderson, his fifth book in this series is gonna be coming out this December. And this is a book that, hopefully you catch a theme here, that takes an amazing story with a very interesting, unique magic system and just expands the world setting of Stormlight Archive. If you've never read the Stormlight Archive, I highly recommend it. It is a thickum series, just saying, but this is arguably the best book so far in the series. It's what a lot of people have really enjoyed. A broken world where you have these almost world-ending storms that come through regularly, and you have a great evil that has returned to the land. That is all I will be able to say. And Words of Radiance takes the themes and the characters of the first book and expands. Uh, and something amazing about Brandon Sanderson, if you've never read about him, is he delves a lot into uh, mental health conditions. And this book, uh, which it's all very, very deep to me because my brother and my mother both had uh, some struggles with mental health. And reading these books, in a way, seeing what these characters go through was very cathartic and in a way puts me and my family in place in the books, which is very interesting to say. But Words of Radiance does an amazing job of expanding and the battle scenes are amazing, the magic system is amazing, the characters are incredibly amazing. Dalinar, probably one of my favorite characters of all time in any book series. I need to do a ranking of my favorite book characters at some point, but that is my number four. Sorry about that. Daughter just woke up and didn't want to go back down. Fatherhood. <laughs> Coming in at number three, and at any point could be my number one because of just how amazing it is, is Jade War by Fonda Lee, the sequel to Jade City and her Greenbone Saga. This series is a post-World War II inspired Japan uh, triad underworld saga of a war between two rival underworld clans and using Jade as a power source of magic, but that is secondary to the political machinations of these underworld organizations. And let me just say that there are characters that are bad people that you come to understand and when they die, you feel it. And the sequel to this one is also amazing in Jade Legacy. So highly, highly recommend Jade War in the Greenbone Saga. Coming in at number two is Red Seas Under Red Skies, the sequel to Lies of Locke Lamora in the Gentleman Bastard series. Scott Lynch did something amazing in the Gentleman Bastard series. The Lies of Locke Lamora is an incredible uh, kind of Ocean's Eleven inspired uh, thief saga that is very gripping where magic is secondary and the political underworld machinations are just incredible to the point where as a con artist, Locke Lamora and his friend Jean are shining examples of brotherhood and that is played out in the sequel Red Seas Under Red Skies in even further detail. Taking heist adventures, meeting gambling dens, meeting pirate Battle, like, it is absolutely incredible, amazing. Red Seas Under Red Skies, if you like pirate adventures, if you like Ocean's Eleven, gambling heists, Red Seas Under Red Skies has it all and expands upon the concept of friendship in heartbreaking detail. And let's just say Jean Tannen is one of probably the greatest literary sidekicks that there is, full stop, fight me on it. And finally, my number one favorite sequel of all time that far surpasses the first book, and that is The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. This is my old copy. I've read it a time or two, you can tell. And The Wheel of Time is probably my favorite series of all time. And the recent uh, Amazon Prime series that was good in many ways, there's some areas that it kind of did not expand or clarify as much as that I wish it had, or ways that they deviated a little bit, but that's a whole separate conversation. But The Great Hunt, if you've ever read Robert Jordan and his Wheel of Time, you know how amazing it is. And if you've never read the, the Wheel of Time, the first book can be a little long and feels very repetitive and it's like, oh, this is reminiscent of everything. And Robert Jordan did that on purpose to, in a way, call back to Lord of the Rings and a lot of the classic fantasies. 
But in The Great Hunt, what he does is he expands into a much greater sphere, a much greater world, and really hits his stride with characters, with plot, with the magic system, with expanding this universe to the point that you can see that he initially was planning on this being the second of three books, and he realized, I think at the end of this book, don't quote me on this, but I think that he, after the end of this book, decided that this had to be a much grander scope that would last longer to the point of there being 15 books, you know. So uh, one of the greatest series of all time and The Great Hunt, can't recommend it more. Number one for me, sometimes I have other books kind of above it, but it's always in that conversation, at least of great sequels. There's great books that come along later on, but in terms of second books that expand the, ser the series, I know many of you might like Patrick Rothfuss with his series or Paulini with the Aragon series. There's a lot of other amazing series, but for me, these are the top 10 books that are incredible sequels that either were equal to or surpassed their predecessors. Thank you so much for tuning in to 10 of my favorite sequels. Uh, if you like kind of what I talk about and what I do, uh, right up here are some of my favorite book covers. Right up here is a recent video that I did. Have an amazing fall pumpkin day. Uh, go read some amazing stories and God bless you. Bye-bye.